Oh, that's cold. Hey, what's going on? Hope you're doing all right. So lately I've kind of been in a bit of a funk. Not really sure what it is. You know, work and everything like that kind of, or no work for that matter. You know, we're all in different positions, but um, I, I always kind of do this weird thing where over the course of like a week, by the end of the week, I'm like, why do I feel funky? There's something weird, something's off. And then I kind of look back at what I did for that week and half the time is I didn't make music. And similar to the last time I did this, um, that was more for like just kind of proving a point, I guess. This time it's just to help myself. So I just kind of wanted to make a track. Feel free to kick it. Um, we're gonna be using the 3000 the Nord Drum, which has been super fun lately. And I'm probably gonna end up doing sample stuff, but I wanted to focus a bit more on using uh, the synths I have, the synthesizers I have. So um, I'm gonna start by retuning my Deckard's Dream, just because this thing kind of goes a little haywire sometimes. But um, yeah, all right, let's let's uh, let's find some drum samples. Not bad actually. Let's go to B. I like these. These are dope. So. Me personally, I kind of like to start with the chord progression of things. Um, I can build a simple chord on peak if I, actually, you know what, let's go to the Deckards. So I originally had a lot of the MIDI stuff going through the MPC 3000, but with so many changes that I've been making up, um, I've kind of been relying on Ableton to do a lot more of the MIDI sequencing when it comes to my synthesizer. So for example, this one I have here, I can just play the Deckards if I say, take MIDI from this thing. Oh my God, are we even plugged in? Let me double check. So this should be going there. There it is. I know the Deckards is out of frame, my bad, but. Oh, whoops, I'm on a track right here. It's kind of cool. Um, let's go with peak. Initialize. It's just a basic thing. I'm not trying to go too hardcore. Uh, what do I want to do to this? That's cool. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. Uh, no overdrive, a little bit of resonance. So uh, everything in my studio automatically goes to the MPC 3000. So I can just say, let's sample three seconds, record ready. Ah, you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna discard that and turn the filter all the way up because I can use the filter on the 3000. It's not as prominent. I need a little bit of key tracking. Key tracking is basically going to say the higher notes. This one is going to be, um, uh, the filter is going to be turned up a little bit. Maybe more. Yeah, that's what I want. And the lower notes are going to be turned down. A little higher. Okay. I needed five seconds on that, whoops. Cool. Keep, I'll just call that SS1 for sample. Boom, 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 boom. And I'll put it on seven, sure that'll work. Cool, full level program sample. What's cool here is I have the filter envelope, so I can just turn this up a little bit, give myself a little bit of an attack, decay, set the resonance. The resonance on this filter is insane. You go to like 10 and it's, you hear how crazy it's almost peaking. 
<laughs> peak. So I kind of like doing that where I almost add the rhythmic element to the sample. That way it kind of starts falling off when I pitch things around. So if I were to go 16 levels on this thing, right? Let's say we set the center pad to nine. So, but then if I play it, it comes faster, even slower. Wait for it, see? Okay, that's cool. Count in, uh, we'll make it two bars. So I want to sequence edit. Where is it at? Five, yeah, copy, one copy before bar three. Yeah, see that? Ta, 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 ta. Comes way late. Oh, that's so tight. So, channel 10 or track 10 is the minor. Oh, that one sucked. Dude, I lost it. I lost it. So I need a hi-hat sound as well. Um, I could do that here. Actually, you know what? I'll do it on here because this is actually one of my favorite things that a lot of sequencers miss. I mean, it's always on the NPCs. But if I go to like, let's say my hi-hats, right? And I say long one. This one I like a lot. So I'll say sample. Uh, we just need 0.5 seconds record. Cool. Keep, I'll call that HH1. And I'm gonna assign that to track four. This one here. So check this, the 16 levels thing. There's no variation, but there's also velocity and there is decay. So really short, really long. So if I were to uh, just do the basic cheesy thing that we would all expect. I need to re-record those notes. <laughs> I keep missing it. Awesome. Then uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna let this play through just so I can hear what kicks would go with this. Now, damn, yeah, okay. I Say no more. Uh, record. Actually, I want to clip it a bit. No, 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 no. Let's clip it. Let's clip it really hard. See what happens. Uh, a little too much. That's cool. Two B D one. Da 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 da. Put this here level count in actually we don't need to count in so another thing you can do to kind of add some variation is I'm gonna do 16 levels again but of course this time velocity and just add some like little ghost kicks really really subtle and again if I go into this mode here uh, we have 
the sample track of the MPC coming in on seven. So I can actually side chain that to the kick, which is, what the hell? Where's the kick? Why is my kick on there? That's wrong. Uh, it should be coming out of 150, zero. There it is. So now it's on track one. So now I can take uh, where our sample is, this one here. And I mean, just, this is the way I make music all the time. So compressor, see like I already have the little, uh, the high pass here because I don't need anything below that for uh, that sample specifically. And if I say kick, cool, we play this back. If we really wanted to like crank the crap out of this thing, but that's like too extreme for even for me. The Nord is too loud. That's cool. It could use a compressor. You see how that boom, boom kind of peaks off right there? Ba -da -da, boom, at above six, that I don't like. So that's kind of where the compressor comes in handy. It kind of just grabs peaks, you know? So let's say, uh, Another one. So look, there's even a sidechain compressor already set up on that track specifically because I this is the way I make music all the time. So I kind of wanted to catch that last little peak there. A little faster. The other thing to note is this is going to start bringing up the, the lower volumes as well. So if I really wanted to just here how everything is now hitting that, it kind of adds like, there's some makeup gain, so I'm gonna just bring this all down. It's getting a little more even. Okay, so I need a bass line. Oh man, these are dusty. That's cool. Uh, I believe my Pro 3 is still connected to here. Da, da, da. Oh, it's not. I must have disconnected that too. Okay, okay, it's okay. We'll go, so what tempo? We're at 124. Let me set this to 124. Turn on the ERM that's waiting for it, right? Okay, cool. So then if I stop, 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 we'll go to Pro, whoa, what? So then where's the Pro 3 going? Hmm. The Pro 3 should totally be sending notes over here, but it's not. Let's see if I have it plugged in with USB. Hopefully I do. In from, uh, time out, time out. So what am I, what am I doing with my life? Ah, that might solve it. So that's definitely not plugged in. I need a USB cable, be right back. Okay, so now to find this USB here. Cool, and I'm just gonna run this right into here. Oh, is that an open port? Oh, that is not. Are these all full? Are you serious? What is my problem? Okay, you're getting unplugged, whatever you are. Please don't be in use right now. All right, that'll work. And you got a 50, 50% 50 chance to plug in a USB, right? But you always get it wrong 99% of the time. So lowering this back down, where was I? Pro 3. Oh, wait, you're telling me I'm gonna have to change. Oh, sweet, awesome, is it there? All channels. Oh, 
I gotta send USB out. Here we go again, global. So why is this not working? Let's figure this out. I must have some weird setting. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna sample the Pro 3. So I'm gonna play this back. And I kinda want this to be Oh, whoops. One thing that's weird about the Pro 3 when you're in the global menu, none of the parameters work. Okay, a little sizzle on there. Cool, so I'm gonna sample, let's do this. Let's sample really high and then we'll pitch it down. Uh, we can only pitch down one octave, so we'll sample here. At least that I know of. Sample, we'll do one second. Keep, and we'll call this one, we'll actually just call it the Pro 3, why not? Pro 3. Save, assign, I'm gonna assign that to six because I have channel eight being taken up by the Nord, seven is our sample, kick, hat, miscellaneous. And this will be the Pro 3. Set that to uh, mono and then tuning. There it is. And I. Whoa, 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 whoa. We can go down two octaves. Okay, okay. How did I not know that? I always do tuning here. Does that go further than. Yeah, see? If I do tuning here on the sound parameters, it only lets me go down to 120. But if I go directly onto its main tuning, I can go down two octaves, damn. Okay. Keep uh, PRO3, Pro31, save, done. We'll put that here. Cool, yeah, I'm down with that. Does that sound okay? Should we clip it a little? Uh, keep. Uh, I've done this so many times already. Pro 32, done, done, done. Put that here. Oh yeah, that has a little bit more bite. I like that. So I'm pretty sure, I hope that this isn't the lowest that the sample can be pitched when using 16 levels. So let's see, uh, center pad nine. Yeah, see, it's the lowest it can go. It can go up from here. So with that said, I'll just set our center tuning pad to as low as possible, which is four octave up from here is there, 12 pads. So then we're playing in G minor, which is da, 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 da. Cool. The other thing, this is, um, I want it to be a little shorter. We'll play off the start and decay 300. Kind of just like a plucky, simple bass line, so. What, what? up every time and plus I'm on the pro 3 track that's not even gonna work so I kind of like that first one messed up that's kind of cool let's see what happens if we double it That works. Programmed, we'll go to our filter for that. Actually, I wanna turn it up a little bit. Cause where is it hitting? So again, I must have messed up some crazy thing cause the mixer volumes are all off. So this needs to be zero, volume 50, just track six. And see, I already have a high pass on there, I know it. 
Oh, I don't need to turn that up at all. If anything, I need to turn it down. So then if I go to the filter, listen to how nice this is, seven. And then I like, I like doing around 100 to 300. And then I wish there was chorus on here, but luckily there's the uh, towel chorus, which I'm pretty sure is free. I always spell it wrong. <laughs> Done. Done. So, uh, you know I like to regularly use Splice. I have a link in the description um, to use if you want to sign up for Splice. You get a little bit of a discount, I'm pretty sure, and I think I get like a kickback. It's no extra cost to you or anything like that if you want to use it. I use this all the time. But what's cool is I can just type in like vocal and uh, find some vocals. <laughs> That is so dope. Oh, so then I know I am in uh, G minor. G minor. That's dope. From my side. Too long, too long. Stop, stop, stop. You were, you were good the first time. Okay, here, we'll come to Ableton. Uh, I'll just throw it in here. What the heck just happened? Now we're here, let me uh, grab a new audio track. I just want that away. Don't go away. Uh, unwarp this. Ooh, what's this long thing here at the end? I, from my side. Ooh, that is pretty freaking fire, man. That is where it is at, as I would normally say. So I'm going to go ahead and solo this. Um, by soloing this, it's going to cut off the ERM multi-clock, so everything else is going to stop playing because everything's running from the 3K right now. I'm going to set this to not 30 seconds, to 3 seconds. From my side, from my side. Okay, cool. Record ready. From my side. And I have it solo. From my side. That's cool. I don't mind the cutoff. Whatever. Uh, we'll call this B O X one. Da 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 da. Dun dun dun. And this one, um. Where do I want to save this? I guess I'll do it to nine. So anything else that is in pads one through eight just goes out of the master left and right channel. And I don't have that occupied right now, but it, something is playing on there because I think all my mixer settings, when I went to save stuff onto the floppy, didn't get saved fully. Um, I can leave that off for now, I gotta fix that. So cool, we saved that and I also want... Don't go away. 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 Away, 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 away. Cool, that'll work. Away. And unsolo it. Mute. Away. Cool, and then we'll call this box two. So B. Oh, who lives in that? Two. Dun, dun. And I'll put that right here. So, box two. Away from my side. Away from my side. Away. Yeah, so I need these two to cut each other off. Um, it's going to be pad nine and ten. So, cut off pad. This one I want to cut off ten. Away, away. Actually, I want this one to cut off away nine and this one to cut off ten. From away. From away, from away, from away. Oh, you know what's happening? I think my uh, the outputs on my MP are a little funky. 
What else is playing on this here, 1314? Aha, that's the culprit. Okay, so you need to GTFO, my friend. So you need to go on to four. There we go, that's what I want, so. From us away, from us side. What's cool with this is because it's in scale, I can just pitch them up or down and they might sound okay. I normally don't like doing this. It's a little cheesy to me, but let's see. This octave up. <laughs> yeah, see, not down. Let's try minus 120. <laughs> no, thank you. That's almost cool. Almost. Oh, come on. Oh, it's this cable. Uh, you know what I need to do? I need to erase that in general because the first one I don't like. So, uh... it's a little early. Dope. So with this, I can then, uh... ooh, I can send this to the delay. That would be cool. So let's go to the mixer. Going to the effects program, the delay is where? I just forget what the delay is at. Effects mixer. Okay. So effects. And then I need to turn on the effects. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Turn it down. Now. Oh, what did I just turn down? Oh, the kick. <laughs> So then, just to kind of help sit a little better for both of those, I'm just gonna go and add the EQ8. So I'll do EQ8 and just really shape it. You know what's a fun one to do too? Is like, I want it to be like this, but move a little bit. So I can set this here to shape it and then I can just add an auto filter. And then I can just say bell, and then a little bit of LFO. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Just a little less though. Then what else would I want to add? Is there any more sounds on the Nord I can add? I want to add like a clap sound. That's cool.
kind of like three the most. Yeah. That's cool. But we need a clap. I just love that staccato -y short clap. Okay, okay, sample. Uh, we'll do 0.5, record ready. <laughs> Keep uh, CP1. Oh, whoops. <laughs> so that's again being sent to where it shouldn't be. It should be on two. And then it should be set to zero. No! I changed the uh, kick. Why does it sound like it changed more than just the kick? Has the kick always been going off that hard? No, something's funky. Has the kick always been like that? Am I tripping? Let me delete the kick. Oh, this has a ton of bass in it. And that's this here. No, it's still, this is sending MIDI back out into here. So there's a weird feedback loop that's getting caused here, man. That's annoying. Hmm, how do I want to do this? Okay, well, what I can do actually is I can just go here and I'll turn, there it is, I can send that off. And I'll just grab this as a clip, which is on eight. Oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. whoops. So, uh, delete. Da, da, da. Wait for the four bar loop to reset. Cool, so now that I grab that, I can basically just turn off the Nord because I have it locked in. So now we're listening to it in here. So now if I go back into here and I set this to be the BD, which is our kick drum. So let me just unplug the MIDI out of the Nord. What the? The kick is back. That kick is living somewhere where it should not be. I'm going through each track to see if I hear the kick get triggered. It's not on five. Where the hell is the kick happening? What? How in the world is that even? You just need to stop. Okay. That sounds sick. No idea. Cool, so there's that. And then we can do. So this on my side is almost a little too nasally. Or not nasally, just like. Oh, it's this here. That's dope. And we can just do a little reverb. Actually, you know what, let's do the towel reverb. Cool, wash it out. So I'm gonna put this compressor, which is taking the same signal from the kick, and put it behind. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and take all these tracks, and group them, and throw a drum bus on there. Okay, way 
way too loud, bro. Compressor, let's see what this sounds like. Nah. So, I kind of did something here that I don't like. I added the drum bus before I even like mixed this group. So I'm gonna just do a quick little, let's kick. Also, I was watching the um, the Kush After Hours thing. I, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that dude. I'll put a, a link to his video down below, but he talks about mixing in mono and why it's really important, and it really is important. All right, you know what? I need to swap out this cable. This cable's busted. It's so annoying. These, I, I feel like I always buy Hosa cables because they treat me so good and I've never had a problem with them, but this is the first time I've ever had an issue with these. Yeah, it's totally that cable. Okay, so we are now mixing in mono and this kind of just helps everything. You can kind of see where everything else sits. I want to compress this kick a little bit, the glue compressor. I feel like the kick just isn't hitting hard enough. Oh, there's a lot of low end down there. Okay, maybe. So here's another kind of like uh, thing I do all the time. I don't want to call it a rule, um, but basically I either choose the kick or the bass line to go below 50 Hertz. Cause in a club, anything around 50 and below is gonna hit anybody right smack dab in the face. Like it's a punch to the gut, no matter what. Um, even if so, if your baseline is at 50 kilohertz and up, like there's a cut, right? You just have a high pass on there. It's still gonna feel like a baseline. Um, same goes for the kick drum. At least this is from my experience playing house and, and like dance and techno and stuff. It gets muddy real quick. Cause a lot of these parties have, they focus in on the subs and they got like, you know, 12, 20 inch subs, and then like two little tweeters. And you're like, okay, this night's gonna be a little wild. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna swap the two and I'm gonna set this down to about 24. And then uh, my base, which I believe is on six. Yeah, I'm gonna just set it to 50. Whoa, 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 there's too many things going on. <laughs> cool, that works. Utility. I want the bass to be, oh, I just have it turned way down. What am I doing? So the other thing too, because the bass has such a big chorus on it, it's spreading the stereo field of the bass, which kind of helps sometimes, I at least I've noticed it loses the bass. So this utility in Ableton is actually pretty nice because it has this bass mono. So anything below this point will just be monophonic. This clap's kind of bugging me. And the other thing too, I'm mixing on V motors right now, not my Adams. These are not good for mixing. I have some new mixing headphones coming in soon that I'm so stoked on. And I can't wait to swap them out for these. These are great for DJing, terrible for mixing. Actually, you know what? Let me just take a sneak peek and see where we're at. Oh my God, yeah, see the bass is beyond gone. This, this, this is too much. Oh man, I destroyed this mix. Anyway, I think that'll work. Let me track this in really quick before I forget. But um, yeah, I mean, yo, thank you so much for hanging out and for kicking it. I appreciate you being here, seriously, it's awesome. I love making these types of videos. Uh, let me know down in the comments what else you wanna see. I'm just having fun jamming here in the queue. You know, got the desk going. I wanna start doing some more live streams. Maybe I should start doing these live and kind of poke into the chat. Uh, anyway, it's always good to see you. If you wanna support the channel, I got some merch and sample packs at this link here. Feel free to check it out, but you kicking it is more than enough. And I'm excited to see you in the next one. And until then, uh, share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. I'm going to track this out real quick. Boop, boop.